please follow along as I read Chapter 7, Back from Ruins. After 1954, Ellis Island became a ghost town. Building, once grand and stately, fell into decay. Weeds and vines overgrew the walls. Windows cracked. Plaster walls crumbled inside. Rain and floods rotted the floors. Thieves snuck onto deserted islands, stealing everything from doorknobs to dishes. Ellis Island was a wreck. Then in 1965, President Lyndon Johnson declared Ellis Island a historic site. For nearly three decades, Ellis Island was a symbol of freedom for millions, he said. Johnson put the National Park Service in charge of the site. The Park Service was set about clearing away the junk on the island. 40,000 tons of garbage were removed. Repairs were made to the main building so that it was safe for visitors. In 1976, Ellis Island was opened again to the public for one-hour tours, but the island still looked shabby. New York Times writer Sidney H. Shanberg reported on the slow rot of the main building. Windows are out, and in one room, moss and small trees are growing, and pigeons have settled in. Bob Hope, 1903-2003 to 2003. Bob Hope, comedian and actor, kept Americans laughing for most of the 20th century. In 1903, he was born Leslie Towns Hope in England. When he was four, his family left England in search of the American dream. They came through Ellis Island, where today the Bob Hope Memorial Library stands in his honor. The Hopes settled in Ohio. Bob had a successful career as a stand-up comic, theater actor, and Hollywood movie star. In all of his roles, he played the funny guy. Starting with World War II, he entertained millions of U.S. troops, bringing humor to war zones all over the world. Irving Berlin, 1888 to 1989. Irving Berlin was one of the most popular songwriters of the 20th century. Besides writing hits like God Bless America and White Christmas, he also wrote many musicals. He was born Israel Belin in 1888 in Russia. He later changed his name when it was accidentally misspelled Berlin on one of his songs. His family fled Russia when Irving was five years old in order to escape the pogroms. After coming through Ellis Island, the family settled in New York City. As a teenager, Irving worked as a street singer and singing waiter. As, at, and at 19, he published his first song. Irving died at the age of 101 after writing more than 1,500 songs. In, 18, in 1982, the future of Ellis Island looked more promising. Pre Pre President Ronald Reagan set up a special group to find ways to restore the island and turn it into a museum. The cost of restoring Ellis Island was going to cost millions but the government wouldn't be paying for any of it. The overhaul was going to be funded entirely by donations from the American people. A well-known successful businessman named Lee Iacocca was put in charge. Iacocca deeply cared about the project. His own parents had come from Italy through Ellis Island. Iacocca raised over 150 million donated by more than 20 million Americans. The restoration, started in 1984, was a huge challenge. Bringing the main building back to its former glory would become the biggest historic restoration job ever done on a building in the United States. Drying out the building came first. It was so damp inside that two giant heaters had to run nonstop for two years before it dried out. New copper for the four domes replaced the copper stolen by thieves. Amazingly, the prized tile ceiling of the Great Hall needed little repair. The ceiling had been installed in 1917 with over 28,000 tiles. Only 27 of the tiles needed replacing. As workers scraped paint off the walls, hidden graffiti came to light. Immigrants had scrawled poems, drawings, names, and messages on the walls. What did they write with? They used pencil and the unforgettable blue chalk of the inspectors. The graffiti was carefully preserved as a piece of living history. After eight years of work, Ellis Island was ready to open its doors once more. Golda, Golda Mayer, 1898 to 1978. Golda Mayer, born Golda Mabovich, 
became one of Ellis Island's most famous immigrants. At age eight, Golda came with her Russian Jewish family through Ellis Island and settled in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A born leader, she led fundraisers to buy school books for poor classmates. Even though she couldn't speak English when she started school, Golda graduated from junior high at the top of her class. In college, Golda started working to make Israel a free homeland for Jews. She later moved to Palestine to work for the cause. Israel became an independent nation in 1948. The following year, Golda was the first woman elected into its parliament. One of her roles was to find housing and jobs for 700,000 immigrants arriving in the new state. In 1968, Golda was elected prime minister of Israel. True to her own immigrant past, Golda opened Israel's doors to people of other nations.